All right. So, Shane, how you doing, man? Doing great. What about you, Shannon? I'm good. I'm good, bro. So yeah, man, we were just we were just rapping about uh, Disney and you know some of the some of the movies that are coming out. Um, we recently, you know, we were talking about um, Polynesia and all, all those you know beautiful beautiful islands of paradise and everything. Yep. And we mentioned Moana. So uh, just just in passing, sort of we mentioned Moana, but I wanted to maybe kind of go back to that. And just speak about uh, what's your take on like Disney movies, you know, the entertainment industry, um, you know, specifically with Disney, right? Uh, animation, where all that's going and everything. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just for starters, I'll, I'll ask you this. So what was your favorite? What was or what is your favorite Disney animated film? I'd say in first place is is Lion King. Okay. And second yeah. place would be uh would probably be Pinocchio. <laughs> okay. Okay, Pinocchio. And why those <laughs> two? What what is it about those two that just kind of Um uh Lion King probably because you know, it could have just been that it came out when it, it it was like the sweet spot when when I was a kid that that movie came out. Yeah. But but also too, I I think it's a very I I just I think it's a very I think it's a very well done movie. I I, I think that the original Lion King I think it still holds up today. You know, the you animated know, I, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah. the original animated one from like what I think it came out in like 90, 1993 or nineteen ninety four somewhere in yeah. there. I I, okay. I think that movie still holds up very well. Yeah, yeah. It was it was. I I would have to say that was probably my favorite one too. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not saying that like, you know, see, like in this day and age, of course, people will be like, oh, yeah, you just like it because it's it's about Africa or something like that. And I'm like, well, you know, no, I don't think that's the reason. I, I kind of actually liked, you know, Mufasa and Simba and Pumbaa and Timon and yep. Rafiki. You know what I mean? It's like you, <laughs> I can still remember all those names. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how good the movie was, right? You and know, Scar. Uh, and Scar, you know what I mean, and and, 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 Ed, the, and Ed the hyena, yep, the laughing cackling hyenas, yeah. you know what I mean, with you know, uh, you know, so it's uh it was a movie that I think, yeah, it probably stuck with us. I think probably because of it probably sticks with us because of our age, you know, like it was mm -hmm. that was the movie that just sort of came out at that time, you know, it was out at that time and. It was the big blockbuster, you know what I mean? Like they had the McDonald's toys, you know, figurine, action figurines, yes. everything. You know what I mean? So you wanted to, you know, like you wanted the posters, you wanted to the costume. You know, that that was a great time for yeah. for movies, and and I and I'm yeah. I'm sure everybody probably feels that way that 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 their childhood was like the was like the best time that's ever existed. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, I've got I mean, I've got two others. They're not Disney films. And I wonder how you think about this. Uh, the Prince of Egypt. That uh, that was really good. My my favorite okay. part about that what, what was the uh, soundtrack. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. The soundtrack of that what was was really really good. Okay, okay. And the other one was uh, El Dorado. You know, I never I never saw that one. Really? Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, that what was that? Good. So so that was not a Disney movie. Well, uh, was that DreamWorks? I Eldorado? believe so. I believe, okay. Yeah, it was DreamWorks. Just, just I think Prince of Egypt was DreamWorks. El Dorado was DreamWorks. I don't know what. I mean, what happened? To, I, that's something I want to know. What happened to DreamWorks? What, what caused them to kind of go out of it? Because they made good animation movies. Well, so Dream, DreamWorks, they're they're supposed to be coming back. Uh, they're <laughs> they're they're making a new Shrek movie. Um, like okay. what, what would this be like? Probably Shrek Twelve or something like that. Um, okay. and, and then, and then I think they're supposed to be making, uh, there's a new animated movie that's, it's going to be released soon onto Netflix okay. and, and John Lasseter, the, the driving force behind Pixar, mm -hmm. um, before Disney fired him because he got me too. Um, okay. uh, uh, John Lasseter is now working with, or it is at least collaborating with DreamWorks on this new big animated movie project it, it has something to do with like it 
I think it takes place in like a like a fantasy medieval period with like castles and princesses and dragons and things. Okay. And uh and they they they've kind of combined forces and and the thing is um you know uh Dreamworks is is owned by by three three big Hollywood guys. Okay. Steven Spielberg, uh okay. David Geffen and uh okay. and Jeffrey Katzenberg, right? Okay. And so right. so Jeff so Jeffrey Katzenberg was was a was a major driving force in the 90s Disney animated movies. Mm-hmm. Uh and and then then Jeffrey Katzenberg ended up having a big feud with uh with Michael Eisner, the CEO of Disney back in the um or the president of Disney back in the 90s and mm-hmm. uh and and um and Katzenberg ended up parting ways with, with Disney and mm-hmm. and Katzenberg, Geffen and Spielberg ended up forming Dreamworks. And then and then they ended up kicking out like Shrek and El Dorado um and Prince yeah. Prince of Egypt and all those different things. Yeah, um yeah, yeah. but but you know in in the time period Dreamworks has kind of gone through a period of wandering probably it's probably had something to do with like acclimating to the new environment of streaming and everything. Mm-hmm. But now now they're they're starting to work deals with Netflix in particular mm-hmm. which there's a lot a lot of money there, you know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and ever since uh Disney canned uh John Lasseter who mm-hmm. and and just to give you an idea, John Laster was the guy behind um, behind Toy Story, A Bug's Life, mm-hmm. Monsters Inc. Um, mm-hmm. He he was behind Finding Nemo. Okay. He he was the driving force behind all those things. Yeah. Um, and and they and Disney Disney kicked him to the curb. So many so many of those stories that I I kind of because I, of I, a I very remember. tenuous accusation, and I'm, I'm not going to say that it's false, and I'm not mm-hmm. going to say it's true. I'm just going to say it's a very tenuous accusation. Um, <laughs> okay. but, yeah, yeah. They, that sounds like you're not you're not trying to get into it. So we'll no, 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 <laughs> no. That's not something like like. Look, look. I'm I'm not going to sit here and say that there's no credibility to the accusation. But the only thing I'm, I'm going to say is that it's an um, accusation. Yeah. yeah. You know, clearly it didn't get adjudicated in court. So right. maybe there's not. So may, maybe it wouldn't pass the the uh, the merit test to be able to to uh, to convince a jury. You know, okay. so okay. so, but none of that really matters because Disney canned him. You know, as, as mm-hmm. they did a lot of people, and really, D- Disney Disney lost when 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 they lost John Lasseter, they they really lost probably one of the best story guys in Hollywood today. You know, mm-hmm. um, so so John Lasseter is now collaborating with DreamWorks. I don't think he officially works for DreamWorks, but he's collaborating with them. Okay. Okay. So, so, so yeah, I mean, what, what do you, okay. You know, all the stories that we sort of grew up with and everything, you know, we, we, there, there used to be this whole, you know, I don't know how much of a conspiracy theory it is or not, you know, um, but there used to be this whole thing of like, you know, all the stories, you know, they, they were related somehow, you know, and, and they, they would be like, you know, they would say, you know, like Tarzan and, and and Snow White are related, and that's why you see mm. this whatever. And you know they talk about the little uh, they would say like there's little Easter eggs and this thing that's connected to that thing or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. And I I think to myself like that's interesting, right? Like the the whole con- like the whole thing of conspiracy or whatever. But my my the, what was more interesting to me was where did a lot of these Disney stories actually come from? Where 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 was their sort of cultural origins? You know, mm. so you think about like Snow White or Cinderella or uh, you know Snow White and the Seven Doors, Cinderella, um, fro- the stuff like Frozen, right? Uh, what's her name? What's the girl's name? Oh, Frozen. from 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 Frozen, um, Elsa and Anna. Elsa, right? Elsa and Anna, right? Yeah, Elsa and Anna. or the Little Mermaid. You know, so one thing I found, you know, I, I know you heard of the Brothers Grimm, right? Mm-hmm. They're two two German brothers, but they were like they were like they were collecting stories all all around like Germany and I think like the Rhineland, you know, all that stuff, you know, Austria, whatever, you know. Uh, Northern Europe, Scandinavia, um, and they were—I think they were able to kind of collect these stories and see that they were related somehow, like historically and anthropologically. 
and linguistically, they, they, they shared a lot of the same motifs and, you know, this whole thing about a castle or a dragon or, you know, a knight coming to, you know, for chivalry and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, that was more interesting to me, like where, where do these stories come from? Where do they originate from? What's the whole, what is the sort of um, overarching theme, you know, b behind a lot of these stories. Right. And, you know, you would see like a lot of times it was like the, the, the male figure having to be chivalrous, you know, take up his armor, take up his, you know, take up his sword and shield. Uh, the the woman is, you know, um, you know, she fell asleep. We got it. Or she's, or she's in a castle. We got to save her. You know, or Rapunzel, right? Um, or, you know, there's there's something about one of the characters that's flawed that needs to, or that's wrong that need to be saved. You know, from that thing you know what i mean like snow white she's sleeping she's got to be kissed in order to be woken up mm -hmm. i don't remember what cinderella's thing was it was like what she, they had to find a slipper in order to yeah she she uh in. she she had that that evil stepmother you know and yeah. then and the three stepsisters and everything and right and, right, and the, right. the 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 only friends that she had were the animals and like pumpkins and stuff and yeah right you, you and know and, it, and if, if yeah. Cinderella were living today, you know, you know that she would have gone to a psychiatrist. She would have been put on all kinds of drugs. You know, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't doesn't it interesting that that those a lot of those characters there's the there's the mother there's the mother role right where it's like there's the mother role or there's the the role of the the older woman and I you know I, I'm not even trying to say this as a way to like be critical. But I, but you do see that a lot of times. It's like there's the older woman in these movies who has mm -hmm. some sort of animosity towards the younger woman, right? Like mm -hmm. Cinderella, this this evil <laughs> stepmother, uh, Beauty and I mean, um, uh, the Little Mermaid. It's the 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 octopus lady. She looks, you know. Oh, she, um, Ursula. She looks, yeah, Ursula. You know what I mean? And, and she she wants she she wants uh. Um, the little mer uh, she wants Ariel's uh, voice. She wants Ariel's voice. You know, she right. wants her beautiful, young, vibrant, uh, <laughs> um, sing. You know, singing voice. Youthful. Right, right, right. And then there's Snow White. She's, you know, the witch. Right. She she wants her. What is it? She wants her beauty or something like that. Because mm -hmm. doesn't she go to the mirror and she's like, "Who's the fairest of them all?" You yeah, know? and like, and 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 the, and the and the mirror looks back at her and says, "Not you." <laughs> and she, right, and she's right. not happy you know she, yeah and then there's there's um there's uh what's the other one the last one oh rapunzel you know you got the 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 you the the witch keeps her up in the tower you know she keeps using her hair as a healing thing you know to make her youthful again or keep her from from her true appearance, you know, like her age yep. being old and dying or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's that type. Now we've seen a change away from that. Right. We've seen sort of a, where the, the, the female is not necessarily having, a, having to battle with an older woman. It's more like some kind of, it's either like like they're battling with nature, right? Or 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 they might uh, maybe change the you know change the narrative a little bit to where it's like okay the 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 male will be the the like the evil character, right? Like in Princess and the Frog, it was the voodoo priest. Mm -hmm. Remember, he's the one that had the friends on the other side. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? I suppose. I mean, I suppose the Lion King had had a, had a male character. Oh yeah, yeah, bad. yeah. Scar, right? you know. I mean, there was Scar, right? So, I mean, you can you can have. I don't. I don't think that it's necessarily like they're just painting, you know, females. But, but I I do think you you've had, in the past there was more of that. There was more of like the female archetype. You know, this like you got this older woman who's envious of the younger woman, 
Mm-hmm. Who wants to change that? But you, but you, but you, you know, here's another one. Here's another one. So that it doesn't sound like, you know, we're just picking on women, right? Or picking on the female archetype of Disney. Mm-hmm. You talked about Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, maybe you can explain that story because when I when mm-hmm. I never really I never really understood that story. Well, so um so before we talk about that, I think I think mm-hmm. it's really important to establish that, you know, so the reason I think Disney movies in particular resonate with people as much mm-hmm. as they do, mm-hmm. um, and and I think the reason that someone like Walt Disney was able to get away with kind of like taking character names and very basic kind of like scenery and themes from, from like the brothers Grimm. And uh, I forget what the guy's name was that wrote the little mermaid, the, 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 the Danish writer, I forget what his name mm-hmm. was, you know, yeah. and, and was able to, to take, to take Pinocchio. Pinocchio was from uh, Italy, right? What mm-hmm. was Pinocchio mm-hmm. Italian? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think the reason that, that Disney was able to take those stories and kind of, and rehash them and kind of remake them and, Really, the in 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 all fairness, in a lot of Disney movies, the only the only thing that's similar between the Disney version and the original version, it's like names and like setting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and and a lot yeah. of other things are very very different. And I think yeah. now I could be wrong, but I think a big part of it is that Disney being in this very uh, the culture of like the twenties and thirties in America that was really very fundamentally Christian, you know, mm. at, at, at least very, very, very saturated with, with, with Christian values and Christian ethics and Christianity. Mm. Um, I think there was this, <clears throat> this ability to, to, um, to get a closer, to get more intimate with reality, Okay, you know, to, to get closer to reality than the brothers Grimm were able to get. Okay. Okay. You know, to, to, to get more closer than, you know, and, and I, I think that's one of the reasons that, that those Disney movies, they still resonate with, with us today. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. in many ways, I think one of the reasons that, that the new, the newer movies that Disney's pumping out really are not resonating all that well. You right. know, like they right. uh, the most recent animated Disney movie was called, uh, called wish. Okay. And ain't nobody seen that man. Like, yeah, you know, th- I, th- never... you know, you know that thing was a huge box office uh, fail. Yeah, you know, and and, and you know, I, I guess what I'm saying is <clears throat> that there there was this moment in time, I think, wh- when when Disney began that it kind of built into the culture of the company this ability to to really get intimately close to to what was real, mm-hmm. and, and and we have to and one thing we have to admit that's not a very popular thing to say today is that men experience reality differently from the way that women experience reality. Right. Okay. So mm-hmm. the, the really, the really popular politically correct thing to say now is that men and women ought to experience reality the same, that there should be this, this, um, that, that, uh, that humans ought to be kind of, and, um, I'm trying to think of what the right, right word is. Um, is, is it an androgynous and androgynous and androgynous? Yes. Yeah. That, uh-huh. th- that, yeah. that, uh, that, that, he, that humans need to be androgynous. And I think you're, you're starting to see that in, yeah. or you started to see that in a lot of the Disney movies where, um, <clears throat> I don't mean to offend anybody, mm-hmm. um, Frozen and Moana mm-hmm. and, uh, and a lot of these movies that have very masculine female, um, uh, lead characters. Mm-hmm. I think it's part of that of the culture that has set into the ruling elite of the United States, the, you know, the people that run things like the Walt Disney company and that run Hollywood, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're producing stories that align with their way of viewing reality, right. which, which is a, which there's quite a, there's a greater chasm between what is real and the way they view reality Mm-hmm. Um, in comparison to to the smaller chasm that was there when like Walt Disney first started the Disney company. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like being able yeah. to acknowledge that men and women experience reality in different ways, you know? Yeah. And yeah. and I think that has to be the starting point. And and, yeah. and if people and, and and if people are going to disagree, then then I think I think that that's where 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 people have to have to have a conversation is to 
to get to the core of and and kind of deliberate do men and women experience reality the same or do they not yeah yeah you, you know be, because yeah yeah you know be, because point. yeah yeah, yeah be, be, because a lot of it really really jets off from there and and w- yeah. and what i would argue is that the reason that the that a lot of the 90s disney movies and and the disney movies that came out prior to that that those still resonate with people and that that those have that those are going to last Th- those stories mm-hmm. are going to last is because one of the, one of the fundamental um assumptions that those stories begin with is that men experience reality differently from the way women experience reality yeah 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 i mean i mean i also think one of the problems is is that see people you know, like they create all these like conspiracies about these movies and stuff, right? Like how they're you know, how they might in, be intertwined, or hmm. people want to know like the real they they want to know the real story. They want to know hmm. what you know, like like okay, for instance, you know, and I'm and not to keep picking on this, but like Moana, right? Hmm. People, you know, they created this whole thing, which which I think which I'm not sure if this is a reality or not. I'm not sure how true this is or not, but. You know, there was this whole conspiracy that that you know, conspiracy. I don't know <laughs> uh, that Moana was what actually died in the beginning of the film. Like she, in order to get to the underworld, she actually drowned and died, and then that's how she was able to see all the sort of supernatural or you know, th- you know, things beyond reality is because she had to go like to the underworld or something like that. You know what I mean? And so I'm like, you know, uh, it would be nice to really know these these sort of myth, some of these mythological stories mm-hmm. or these these fairy tales, where you know where they're rooted in. Like, what's the real what's the real story? You know, like what yeah. happened to, to to Moana? Like, is she re- did she really did she really save her nation by being able to put a stone back in its place, or was it really that the community saw her as a as a sacri- sacrifice that was worth sacrificing in order to just, in order to save the community right like the gods wanted her needed needed a sacrifice of a of a young you know of a girl uh i think the pagan telling of the story <laughs> would be that she ends up becoming a human sacrifice yeah, but, you, you know what I'm saying? I, but, but because we're living in a post gospel West, the way yeah. that we tell the story is that that she lives. You know, right. that she, yeah, she yeah. goes into the belly of she goes into the belly of the whale and, right. and she and she lives, you know. Right, right, right. And 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 it's and, and it's the, and it's the same. I would say it's it's probably the same thing for a lot of other stories. You know, like I remember there was a whole thing about, you know, we, there was Pocahontas, the, the, that one. Mm. And and people were like, you know, well, you know what? See now, now everybody was willing to blast that whole thing and tell the truth about that whole story. Can, can we pause for a second? I've got to go get my uh, my power cord. So okay, so yeah, we were talking about Pocahontas, and so, uh, you know, I remember when that movie came out. I, I probably don't remember as much as I think I do, so I might be. I might be adding little stuff in my <laughs> to my memory here, but anyways, mm-hmm. I remember when there was there was the cartoon Pocahontas, and then they came out with the, like this this um this movie that was like based on the real story, I guess uh, that you know she was like a young girl that had gone to England or something like that, and then she oh. she died there. You you know what I'm talking about? I think I, I remember there, there that. Was, yeah, there was. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is there was all this focus on trying to tell the real narrative and trying to tell the real story, because people were starting to be more interested in talking about, you know, decolonization and you know and and I guess you know race relations as far as history goes and. You know the fact that like the Europeans actually, um, you know, came here and they 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 enacted violence on the on the, you know, the native population and stuff like that, and that so that that became sort of a real big thing. And then, you know, like within academia, that that also started to become like a real big thing. Like we want to tell the truth about what happened to these people. These were these were they you know they were they were victims of 
you know, colonialism. They were victims of violence. They were victims of, you know, the Western uh, industrialism, um, you know, and, and, you know, and all of that. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that once the, the narrative, especially like in the, is in, in, you know, recently in, with the Disney and everything, it's sort of like the way that they ended up turning that around was to make the female be the hero, mm -hmm. you know, be the, be the, be the, 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 um, what do they call it? The, the, when you call somebody the, the main character, what do they call the art? The, oh, the protagonist or the, the protagonist. Yeah. They make the main mm -hmm. the female, the, you know, the protagonist or the, the one who saves the day. Right. So <clears throat> I'm just thinking to myself, okay, if they, if they want to tell the truth about that, then why don't they, why can't they just tell the truth about like all these other sort of myths that they want to pick up on, like, like Moana or, you know, something like that. Like, well, well you, I, I, you know, I think the problem is they want to try to deconstruct everything, you mm -hmm. know, the, you know, they want to try to deconstruct myths because they, they view myths as just being like enter just entertaining and stuff like that. But myths are actually very, myths are very powerful. They're very important. And the reason yeah. that they are is that they they pass on values to the to the next generation. Like that's that's one of the ways that the, the, the we encode all this very, very complex information and knowledge and everything about about how you interact with other people. What are you supposed to do with reality and everything? And not only are you being informed by these myths about about what you should do as if you were just a blank slate of tabula rasa, mm -hmm. but in many ways, what these myths are doing is they're they're liberating your your innate nature mm -hmm. and and saying saying, not only is this what you're supposed to do, but it's okay for you to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay for you to be. Um, it, it's not, you know, it, it's to be encouraged and it's, it's permissible. And, and it's something you as a woman have liberty to go out and, and want to be a prince and, and want to be beautiful, you mm -hmm. know, and want to be a, um, a, a mother and, and all this stuff and, and, mm -hmm. and to, to tell a little boy through, you know, through encoded in the myth of the story, mm -hmm. um, n not, not only should you do this, but but it's it's acceptable for you to do it there you know it, it's giving them lip the liberty to do it which which is very different from what you're getting out of movies and stuff now which you know you know the, you know the movies and stuff now again not to try to offend anybody but the movies and stuff now are are, are saying like are trying to like program in this whole thing about well tell me what tell me what what are your pronouns right you know, right, right. you know what 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 they're doing is they're 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 trying to encode this this new system of manners and this in this new new way of behaving. But the problem is, you know, it's this it's this external programming, but there's no there's no internal uh, thing that it corresponds to mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. of us as people. Mm -hmm. So, so the only way for this external coding to, to be successful is through some kind of a, a, um, a tyrannical, uh, powerful bulwark that, th th that will force people to behave mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, myth, what good myths, what real myths do is they, they're speaking to something, to something that's innately inside of you and saying, saying not only should should you be sh not only should you grow up and and sacrifice yourself as a man but you have liberty to do that 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 innate feeling that that you as a little 4 year old boy has that you want to go out and and sacrifice sacrifice yourself for the tribe mm -hmm. not not only should you do that but it's okay for you to do that mm -hmm. you know you know th this isn't some weird this isn't some weird little idea that a four or five year old boy has, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. this, this is real and natural and that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. 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 If, that's if, I, I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it does in the sense that I think, you know, when we're talking about, you know, 
social norms and stuff like that, you know, I mean, you're, you're so in this day and age, I think we are just inundated with this idea of, of, of androgyny, you know, um, or, you know, undifferentiation that there's no difference between, you know, uh, like you said, the, 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 um, the, I suppose the desires and the, and the, the, um, you know, what's important to becoming, if growing up, you know, being a, being a, being a, a, a young boy going through the maturation process, you know, is different. It looks different than what it is for a, a female. Right. And in most societies, you know, men, boys are, boys have to go through some kind of initiation process in right. order to become you know, yeah, in order to become men, right? And so you see that within and, a lot and, of and, the... and so do women. Uh, you, you know, right, there, right. there are yeah. there 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 are two pathways to 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 adulthood. You know, right? Yeah, one and, is and male, there... one is female. Right, and the, and and I think in a lot of ways, you know, like okay, okay, here's one thing I think I think I think a lot of anthropologists and people who study social anthropology. They, they've alluded to this, you know, many times in the past that, you know, there, there are rites of passage, you know, that you go from like being born and going through that <clears throat> process of being part of the part of the community as a boy or a girl. Then you go on to do, you know, different tasks, you know, that 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 will, you know, uh, set you up for, you know, say marriage, you know, and a family and stuff like that, you know. The woman learns how to, you know, take care of sort of the, the hearth, you know, um, you know, or the 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 uh, the, the micro economy, you know what I mean? Take care of home and stuff. Like that. And the male learns how to go out and hunt, or learns how to be a warrior, or you know, com command a, a particular group of people. You know, as you know, he's gonna he's gonna become the chief one day, or he's gonna become an elder one day within the community. You know. So all those things are sort of, you know, I think they're starting to be like there's a willingness to forget that type of those type mm -hmm. of roles, you know, and uh, to say that, oh, no, it's it's OK. You know, like we don't need those those forms of differentiation, you know, like it's OK to be androgynous, you know what I mean, to, to not for a man to not really look like a like what a man is supposed to look like in the Western world, because those are all just western concepts of identity you know that are not real yeah. you know what i mean it, it what's real is whatever you tell yourself you know you are so you know now now people can look like now people can come out and say well i'm, I'm a dog you know what i mean i'm really a dog so i want to just i want to be a <laughs> don't call me anything well, other than that well and, and that's the interesting thing is you can go to pretty much any culture around the world mm -hmm. and they all may have different notions of what a man should look like or what a woman should look like, but they all have this universal concept of the masculine and the feminine. Right. And, and, right. and a lot of these social justice warriors, like in the, in the women's studies departments and stuff like that at the universities, mm -hmm. they will try to say, um, you know, they'll, they'll try to say, well, in this, in this obscure tribe, in this mm -hmm. obscure little part, in this obscure little corner of the world, yeah. The, uh, they had this notion of this androgynous char side character yeah. in in the in this in this uh in this sideshow mythological story. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. so 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 that means that androgyny that that's a universal characteristic. It's like no yeah, yeah. no no dum dum no no it's not. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, yeah. and that's an example of them. They're you know. I think you can. I so. I, I my my brain functions in a really really in a really really weird way mm -hmm. the the thing i always like to do is look at the outliers first mm -hmm. um in, in anything like what are the things that are not included in the norm you know mm -hmm. you know because i think that tells you a lot about what the norm is and and mm -hmm. and whether the norm makes sense or whether the norm doesn't make sense i i, I always like to start with the outliers and and, mm -hmm. and and anybody who who has like any kind of like a math background or anything mm -hmm. they'll, they'll know exactly what i'm talking about that when when you're looking at a set of data the interesting thing about the data it's not necessarily what what the average is mm 
It's not mm-hmm. necessarily what where where all the data clusters. The end, one of the interesting things is to kind of look at well, why wh- why are all the dots here, but why right. are there five dots over there? Right. You know, and and right. the five dots being over there that might indicate to you that there was a problem in the measuring process, or right. it could indicate to you that that there you know it could indicate a lot of things to you. But yeah, so so I I do think that's a beneficial thing, but I think it's dangerous when when you have a lot of dummies that, that that are telling you we need to make what we need to make the norm or we we need to differentiate the norm based upon the outliers right. and okay. and like that's a quick way to to the insane asylum you know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> right yeah 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 so yeah you're saying that like they give too much credence to mm-hmm. this particularity that that seems to be on the outside of of the of the of the cluster or whatever yeah and then you they know want and, to infer from that yeah and 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 you know too a, a little bit further i know i'm jumping around a lot but th- no, there sorry. are um so you look at at all the you look at the disney animated movies for you know that go all the way up into the into the early 2000s you know mm-hmm. the disney and the pixar because re- really both both are kind of one and the same as far as the way that they approach a story mm-hmm. they're 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 putting out they're they're pushing out a story that's generally oriented around the 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 male hero arc or mm-hmm. or I guess you could call it call it like the female hero arc mm-hmm. um so so you're kind of going at, at two different angles you're you're kind of going down two different pathways like like the the rights to adulthood that you see universally you know mm-hmm. um uh but then you end up having movies like which uh, it's it's very interesting to me that you had a lot of these like spoof movies that became mm-hmm. very popular in the late 90s and early 2000s that mm-hmm. were making fun of the conventions of of popular stories like Shrek for instance mm-hmm. you know a lot of Shrek is making fun of the um uh conventions of storytelling of the of the previous century okay yeah you know like like remember so there's the scene in in Shrek where where he goes and um he he goes to the castle the princess Fiona is trapped in you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and she she finds out he's an ogre and she doesn't want to be saved you know right. and and there's a big laugh out of that right you know right. and and the reason that the reason we laugh at that is because because we look at it as being absurd it, it would be mm-hmm. like a dog meowing you know and okay. and people would be like oh that, that, you know that's absurd right well. The problem is, I think, because so much of our culture, um, so much of our culture became about spoofing culture mm-hmm. that now we're in this weird place where we don't really have a culture anymore because our culture became our culture morphed into a, into this thing where it was like eating itself. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and and it it all started by by kind of laughing at ourselves. Right. Then, th- then the norm became laughing at ourselves, and and then the norm became we're not even putting out um, stories that represent what the norm used to be. We're we're just right. putting out stuff that's that's now like vilifying what what the norm used to be, and, right. and it's not only what the stories were, but what the culture used to be. Like yeah. now, now go, you know, go to Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus or or whatever streaming service you have, and type mm-hmm. in like type in none. Or type in mm-hmm. priest, or mm-hmm. type in pastor, mm-hmm. and the type of movies that you're going to see come up, they're going to be horror movies all all the you time, know? every and, and, time. You know, and, and so yeah. so so the the thing is, the the there there was this transition that began like at, as kind of a as kind of like a lighthearted, you know, sarcastic, you know, laughing at ourselves or whatever, like back in the '90s, mm-hmm. and now now vilifying the things that we used to um regard as being good like marriage and um and traditional femininity traditional masculinity Mm -hmm. these things are all vilified in the culture now yeah yeah yep you know and 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 it it all started by mocking the norm and saying that the outlier what what, that the outlier is what we ought to make the rules around and so i kind of think the way back is to mock it, it, it is is to start mocking this culture mm. you know and that that's one of the reasons that i absolutely love stand up comedy <laughs> that be, be, yeah. because cuz cuz stand up comedians they they're 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 mocking this culture and it makes it yeah. makes all all these all these woke social justice warriors that run hollywood it makes their heads explode 
Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? They're, <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 you know, I, 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 because, um, dude, listen, Christians yeah. can laugh at themselves. Right. Yes. We, we're non Christians we're very, cannot. Yeah. You know, and, 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 I, and I'm not just talking yeah. about, and I'm not just talking about our, um, our other, other Abrahamic brethren. You know yeah. our 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 is uh, you know our, our Islamic brethren and 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 our Jewish brethren, but I'm yeah. talking about atheists too. Like you know, they they can all laugh at at um at groups that are not them, right. but but they they can't. None of them can really handle la like like a feminist yeah. will not laugh at a joke that's at the expense right. of feminists. It's true. They, it's true. That's they true. simply will not. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yep, yep, and, and you, know, you better and, not and, make and, fun. And, <laughs> better not make fun of them other two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, and, and, and you, you know, this there's is what always say. there's always something waiting for you on the other side. Yeah, 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 man. And now, now, in, in all in all fairness, I, in, in all fairness, I, I'll I'll say that there are there are there are a lot of funny Jewish people that that will like make little crack jokes about yeah. rabbis and stuff like that. Sure. You know, yeah. and and th there are a lot of Christians yeah. that will crack jokes about like priests and pastors and and you know and yeah. you know funny things in the christian community but man the the yeah. blue haired uh, the blue haired feminists and stuff they they just yeah. they can't laugh yeah. at themselves and 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 i think that goes to show that there's yeah. Yeah. there there's something there you know that's not healthy well yeah because yeah and i and i think it's it's uh you know we talk about we talk about how secularism has sort of become a a uh, religion in and of itself you mm -hmm. know so there are these they've you know as much as much as as much as they have wanted to get rid of prohibitions and taboos they've created they've created other prohibitions and taboos right they, yeah. it's okay to mock and make fun of and 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 go beyond the boundaries when it comes to traditional or more conservative values and and, and beliefs but as soon as you start making fun of them or you say something that might go outside of their uh, zone of, of permissive, you know, what's permissible, then, you know, it's like, OK, now you're going to get the you're going to get the high priests of the of the of the of the, you know, of the alphabet mafia, you know, coming after you. You know, you, what I'm you, saying? Crack, you, you know, you you, uh, you crack a joke about them not having a sense of humor, you know, yeah. and, and <laughs> you know, and, and that's funny on multiple levels. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And they'll be like, "I'll, you know, I'll show you sense of humor." You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, they, they, they get, you know, they, um. But see that that's another thing that takes me back to 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 Disney, right? Like when they started creating all these shows, you know, these these um, like afternoon shows the kids would watch. Like oh, like back in the nineties, the Disney afternoon and stuff like that. Yeah, like you know, a lot of the a lot of the like there was um, you know, or like these these like Darkwing these, uh, Duck. And uh, tailspin and all those, or well, no, more like more like um, that's so Raven. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, like late nineties, early two thousands. Um, yeah, yeah. JoJo Siwa. That's so Raven. Yeah, you know JoJo Siwa. Um, I've heard the name. I I, I don't. <laughs> yes, I think she was a Disney person, jo JoJo Siwa. But you know. The, th the, the whole thing about it is like there's this stereotype that like if you were a child that was in Disney somehow, you know, when you were younger, you know, you turn out to be this, like you grow up and you turn out to be just very, you know, very, very. You got a lot of problems. You got a lot of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, you're just like, I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm breaking the, the taboo prohibition mold and i'm just gonna do what i want to do act crazy and be wild you know and, and people keep saying they're like man I, I remember when you know you know when so and so was was uh was at the was a part of the disney stuff was you know was in the mickey mouse club or something like that and then they turn out to be like these just really you know uh emotionally damaged you know types or something like that you know what i mean or they just flip they just flip flip the script on, <laughs> on everything you know what i mean like yeah. i don't i don't know how to describe it but you know what i'm saying like that they, they, they're you know they they used to be these very sweet children and stuff like that and and then they just turn out to be and and then and, then, and also some of the nickelodeon people yeah. too man right, like, right 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 
pe- people yeah. like Amanda Bynes. Okay. I, I I don't know if you've seen what she looks like now, man, but she. No. <laughs> thing, things are not going well. You know that that's the only thing I'll say is things are not things are not going well. Um. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> y- y- you know, but uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what do you I think guess... about that? Do you think that's true? Do you think? Do you think they they? Do you okay? Do you do you think that is necessarily Disney, or do you think it's just the so the social cultural like what we got going on, and Disney is playing into that? Disney is sort of riding with that because they want to make sales, you know. You see, I think the dominant faction in Hollywood are um, I don't know what you would call them. They're just wicked, you know. I mm-hmm. I I I I I think I I you know I I think the people that run Hollywood, I think they're just like toys of demons you know and they're and 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 i think it's because hollywood has become so it or it became so influential in our culture Mm -hmm. um and you and you did have um people like walt disney back in the day that that were very moralistic and 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 Mm -hmm. would not and would would not cross certain boundaries in in films Mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons that that disney gained the reputation for being for being the type of a uh, a um a a movie mate a well a uh for for being the type of an entertainment company that you didn't really have to you uh, you didn't have to screen what you were showing your kids um because if it had the Disney name on it then mm-hmm. then you uh, you knew it would be safe and and you knew that right. it wasn't going to be um radicalizing your kids or undermining your right. values you know that that it was just promoting mm-hmm. kind of like generally accepted you know good common sense americana morality you know but now that disney has been like fully conquered by Mm -hmm. uh, by 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 these wild um dei people Mm -hmm. um and and people you know woke people and everything and they're they're saying that they do not want to depict a uh a traditional um like like a a, a hero saving saving a or a, a man saving a woman or you know they they don't want to really they don't even want to really depict um romance in in Disney movies anymore they just want to mm-hmm. depict like this androgynous weird weird hero type you know this this androgynous kind of like masculine female lead or or feminine masculine lead trying to like trying to make every just trying to uh, trying to just Mas- promote the androgyny doing. you know yeah yeah and, and and that's the direction the whole thing is going and i don't and this is not this is not financial advice mm-hmm. um but i do not think it's a coincidence that disney disney stock price is down about 60 percent from its peak about two years ago wow okay you know and okay. the reason is as um as nelson pelts a a ver- very very large investor in the walt disney company who dumped all of his stock about two or three months ago said mm-hmm. is that that the people run the people running Disney are out of sync with the audience. Okay. You know, okay. And, 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 and they don't, they don't, the people that are running Disney don't feel that way. They feel the exact opposite. Right. But you know? that's one of the reasons that uh Disney stock right now is roughly about like 90 bucks. But by the time this video is up, it could be 95 or 85 or something. Mm-hmm. But um, but that guy Nelson Peltz, who who wanted a seat on the board of Disney. Who was this? Who controlled the single largest swath of Disney stock out of any out of anybody out of anybody in the world? Um, N- uh, Nelson Peltz had been fighting to get a seat on the board because what Nelson Peltz was saying is that the company has lost that the company has lost its um its uh it it, it it's lost its pulse on what people want. Mm-hmm. You know, and what Nelson Peltz would argue is it's clear in the way, in the direction that Disney's going with their theme parks, mm-hmm. in the direction Disney's going with their movies and television mm-hmm. and everything, just in the direction they're going with everything, that they're they're more interested in in pushing these weird agendas than they are in making money. Mm-hmm. You know, and, mm-hmm. and Nelson Peltz is an investor. The guy's not a moralist. The guy mm-hmm. just wants the guy just wants the stock to go up. That's all the that's yeah. all the guy wants. That's all he wants. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and and what the guy did was he he dumped his stock when it broke like a hundred bucks um mm-hmm. a few months ago. He 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 dumped a lot of stock. But mm-hmm. what Nelson Peltz has said is what he's gonna do is 
He's predicting Disney stock will probably drop. Again, this is not financial advice. This is according mm-hmm. to Nelson Peltz. N- N- Nelson Peltz is saying that he thinks that Disney stock is going to drop probably about another 20 or 30 bucks. And the moment mm-hmm. it, it does, he's going to pull the trigger and dump all the cash that he um that he's sitting on right now. He's going to dump it back and he's going to dump it back into Disney stock so mm-hmm. that he can begin a hostile takeover of the company. <laughs> so, and, and, so and you know, there yeah. there are people like Elon Musk that are sitting on massive piles of cash. And mm-hmm. Elon Musk has expressed that he's interested in throwing money in to buy to um to be a part of a uh, a hostile takeover of Disney. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is a this is a, this is a trying to trying to monopolize on the entertainment on on uh, on Disney, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, because you know, ultimately, the problem is that you have these these weird um weird social justice warriors mm-hmm. who who have been put in positions of power. Mm-hmm. Uh, by by different groups like BlackRock and everything th- th- that are pushing mm-hmm. all the all the ESG score stuff mm-hmm. um, to try to put people to, to try to put an agenda above profits, right? right. Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. so so you have companies like Disney where over the past like 15, 20 years or so, that's it's been this very, very slow um, slow degradation into this 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 agenda pushing organization that that's mm-hmm. full of that's full of just warriors for 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 wokeness and stuff Mm -hmm. um so now that's put the company in a a very weak weak financial position and when companies are in very weak financial position that makes them that makes them opportunities for people Mm -hmm. that want to do a hostile takeover and well all that Mm -hmm. a hostile takeover is is um let's say that 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 you are sitting on a big pile of money Mm-hmm. You know, and and or, or you represent a bunch of people that are sitting on a big pile of money and mm-hmm. you look at a company and you can see that that it's just not it's not being run properly. And, mm-hmm. and, and you know, you can see that, that they are uh, that they're neglecting their that they're neglecting their customer. And because mm-hmm. they're neglecting their customer, maybe that means that the company is is uh, maybe that means that the company is. Is not. It, it, it's not maximizing its potential as far as profits go. Maybe it's only mm-hmm. earning like 50% of the profits that it could be earning if mm-hmm. it were not neglecting its customers. Right. So, so what you do is you put together a plan, you appeal to a bunch of people with money and you say, okay, what I want to do is I either want to get a seat on the board of the company or, mm-hmm. or, or I want to try to replace the CEO and president of the company with myself or with someone else who, who has a similar mm-hmm. vision to me. Mm-hmm. And so, so the only thing that you have to have is a whole pile of money. And, and right. you've got Elon Musk, one of the wealthiest people on the planet. And you've mm-hmm. got people like Nelson Peltz who represent large swaths of people that control a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Bob Iger, the, the, the current head of, of Disney, um, he's been able to successfully put or to successfully block Nelson Peltz from getting a seat on the board of the company for the past like three years. Um, and how is he, how, how is he able to do that? Yeah. So, so what he did was he used company money to literally buy advertisement on, on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, on, on all these different social media platforms to, to argue investors when it was time for them to vote by, to, to vote by, pro- by proxy, to mm-hmm. vote against Nelson Peltz getting a seat on the board. Okay. okay. And, and that's because Bob, Bob Iger is treating the company like it, like, like it's his baby. Yeah. But the thing is, it's not. And and Bob Iger really needs to go. And so, so I think so, the only so, way he's going to go is get, he's going to get pushed out by by um, by um people that have another vision for the company that have a lot of money. So so you're saying that he was putting out advertisements, basically campaigning against mm-hmm. the other guy, Pilts. Like Using to, company to money to do that, yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. And And... and, and and that's something you can do. I mean, why can't you just have a board? I I don't why see do you- how I, I, I you know Disney's a publicly traded company, which means that they're subject to being regulated by the S by the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and also the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. I don't okay. see how using company money to campaign against somebody who wants a seat on the board of the company. I don't see how that's fair. That would be mm-hmm. like the federal government backing one presidential candidate over another one yeah you know i mean yeah. that that's not not good yeah it's not yeah, fair. I'm trying to, yeah i'm just trying to figure out how that's like even 
allowed? Like, how are you allowed to campaign against? Well, I think it comes down to the world isn't fair, you know? Yeah, that's that's a weird one, though. You know what I mean? Like, and you got to remember, a lot of these people are are not Christians. You know, these are people that don't, you know, you know, you you know, even people like Nelson Peltz, he's not motivated to want to get Disney back on track to what it used to be like Mm -hmm. because he's a moralist. He yeah. just wants to make more money. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. and what he's saying is that that when when parents feel like so so let's say 25% of parents now feel like they they need to screen a Disney movie before they can allow their kids to see it because they don't know what's going to mm-hmm. be in it. They mm-hmm. don't know what kind of agendas it's going to be pushing. Mm-hmm. That that means that Disney's that Disney's brand is is being negatively affected. Right. Right, because 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 parents are, are not um because they they're not they they don't have the comfort uh, in knowing that right whatever this movie is is going to you know I don't I have to sit here and sift through the material first before yeah. I can say oh I'll let my child watch this right yep. and that that is annoying you know what I'm saying I I I, I know that from first from first hand you know like yeah it's aggravating to have to actually sit through a movie and filter it you know and and, and you know or or like you know, children would say, well, I, I wouldn't want to watch this. You know, this just came out and I really want to see this movie. And you're like, well, I don't know what they're about to show. And but then you feel like there's this pressure on you as a parent to show that stuff because, well, you know, their friends watched it or, you know, like, well, so and so's, you know, parents, they're OK with it. So, mm. you know, whatever, you know, can I watch it, too? And, stuff, and you're thinking to yourself, I don't know if I really approve of this, you know, show. And this is not just Disney. Like this is this is it's it's everything now, is isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot. And it's it's it, it is it is a lot to have to try and you know the fact that you have to be constantly you have to constantly micromanage what your children are being um inundated with and what they're having to, you know, what what they're watching and stuff. And then you know, then, you know, of course, children have a lot of questions. You know what I'm saying? So then you try to it's it's like they're trying to force you into. Compromising what you believe to be true. And you yeah. say, well, this is the only you know, if you're if you're going to watch Disney movies, then you have to accept the fact that this is the direction we're going in now. And, you know, just 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 be OK with that or or or. Or you're going to be, you know, they try to make you feel like you're out of the loop, like you're not part of the you're not part of the group if you don't if you don't accept, you know, if you don't accept these things like you don't you don't you don't like, uh, you know, you don't like the acolyte. You don't you don't like the new um, the new She-Hulk movie show. You know, you, you don't like Ashoka, <laughs> Ashoka, you know, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's It's like, you know you 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 have to be okay with that 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 those those characters and wh- how wherever the plot is going and you know all this and then all this like under 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 the knee that like they won't tell they won't try to say like this is this is what we're doing yeah we are we are showing that it's okay for for two people of the same gender to to be okay yeah we're, we're, like we're the kiss that happened in the buzz lightyear movie yeah okay. yeah you know what i mean and so they, they want to make it seem like, oh, well, that's just that that's no harm. There's no harm in that, you know, like, these, you know, and it's OK for kids to explore their. Who they want, you know, what they like and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know. No, man, there, there, there's 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 there's, you know. If 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 I'm having to work so hard as a parent to keep my kids from watching that kind of stuff, that's exhausting. Yeah. All right, so if you if you're gonna exhaust parents like that, eventually they're just gonna either they're gonna give into it or they're gonna resist and be like, okay, so we're not we're not we're not paying for this anymore. I'm not subscribing yeah. to this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I'm gonna well, find well, other. Things. Well, well, and and you know, Veggie I think. Tales. Well, well, yeah, well, well, and 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 you see, I think I think where we find ourselves now is, you know, back in the day, what what Disney movies would do is they would show you. Um, idealized versions of reality right mm-hmm. um and they would also highlight idealized versions of reality 
Mm. You know, like not everyone's going to be a prince or princess, right. but but the reason that people are drawn to like princes and princesses is that those are like idealized versions of reality, like that you can yeah. aspire to, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and there was still like the, the, this, uh, you know, it, 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 it was still passing on values and morals and ethics, right. You know, in, in the, in the American tradition, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, really when you get down to it, really, I think when you get down to the core of it is, uh, um, you know, you know, Europe has, you know, Bach and Mozart and Michelangelo and everything. And, and America's got like Walt Disney, uh, you know, right. it, it, you know, okay. in, in many right. ways. Right. Um, yeah. and, and, uh, and so, so back when it first started and really deep in the culture of the company, even after Walt Disney passed away, there were still a lot of old men that were running the company that, that there were still part of his gen part of Walt's generation and that were trained by Walt. They were very, very oriented toward toward telling the story of reality, but in a very idealized way and mm -hmm. highlighting very, very specific things. Mm -hmm. Now that all of that generation are dead, long mm -hmm. dead, mm -hmm. now Disney is focusing on trying to change reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it, it's almost like they're trying to cast a spell on, on reality okay. because you know, mm -hmm. in, instead of reflecting reality and reflecting an idealized version of reality, they're mm -hmm. trying to, re they're, they're trying to propagate a new reality and they're trying to convince children to imitate that. Right. Like, right. so yeah. there's a level. So it, you know, you know, there's a very fine line between, between storytelling and propaganda, mm -hmm. you know, it's a very, very fine line. And I think Disney has transitioned from being mostly storytelling to being mostly propaganda now. Right. In right, many right. ways. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. all of it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That That's um. yeah. And it's hard to, it's hard to, well, it's hard to, yeah. It's hard to know where that line is drawn because you, you know, you don't, you don't, because they're, you know, I guess you, because of everything else that's going on around the entertainment industry, you know, it's it sort of, it's sort of become normalized. You know what I mean? So you, it's like inter the entertainment is just one part of that indoctrin, you know, that indoctrination, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you got the education, you got the, you got the, um, you know, the, the fashion, you got the music, right? So it's, um, you know, and, uh, and I guess I suppose movies are just one one part of that. You know, animation is is just one part of that. You know, uh, the fight against religion. You know, traditional faith faith values mm -hmm. and everything. Right, like all of this is sort of it's like they've 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 you know. And I don't like to say they because it's like, well, then who are you specifically talking about? But I think everybody kind of knows <laughs> who we're talking yeah. about, right? It, it, I mean, it's it, it's essentially non 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 Christian, you know, people, you know, yeah. uh within within these industries and yeah, it, people it's that, people that are trying to repaganize the West. You know, yeah. you know, really I think when you get down to it, because you've got two options here. You've got paganism or you've got Christianity and that's it. Right. 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 And and that's something that, you know, has been I think really argued a lot in the past couple of years yeah. is that like our you know our the is the West becoming more of a pagan society right yeah. is the secularism that i guess one could ask is the secular secularism that we are witnessing actually just a a a, a new a new a, a form of paganism you know what i mean um what what we what we would consider to be atheistic or um freedom uh, freedom of you know freedom of choice and and what happens with your body and all of that stuff it's like is that really true truly secular you know um or is it or is that a religious thing you know because i i, I mean you know when you when you think about the when you think about the pagan world especially when you think about like the romans and stuff right I mean, they, they didn't have, I don't think they, I don't think they had a problem with um, a woman who had an abortion. Right. right. 
uh, I don't, they didn't have a problem with people committing suicide. They actually thought that that was worthy to do rather than complain about your suffering, right? Yeah. That like, you know, just end your life because you don't want to be, you don't want to suffer the indignity and the shame of, of living, you know, a, a, um, a, a life that's not, that you feel is not worth living, right? Yeah. Um, you know, that it was okay f to, you know, for, for, for slavery to exist. Like that was the norm because, you know, you weren't a Roman citizen. You know what I'm saying? You, you were, you were an outsider and, and, and needed to be. Well, know? and, and, and what they would say is it's admirable for the strong to subjugate the weak. Right. 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 You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this and go so, goes all the way back to like the Sabine, the, the Sabine oh, women in, in yeah. you know, in, uh, in in one of the very very early founding myths right. of Rome, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about the 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 war between the Sabines and the and the Latins and yeah. And I think uh, there was there was a yeah there was a there was there I know what story you're talking about. It was like there was a woman who was accused it, of being. Well, well, um, and and it's it starts with an R word, but I I I, I think yeah. if I were to say that, it could it could put yeah we're not we're not gonna, or, yeah um, so yeah uh, but we know so the story. I, I, I'm not I'm not gonna say it. Yeah, yeah, we know the story. So, yeah, it was, it was the Sabines and the Latins. They they were fighting war. But yes, I I think part of the, and I, and and this has been I think this has been raised many times by by other academics and stuff like that. That our world and the way we view things are really returning back to that sort mm -hmm. of period in time where where things things that we that that we would consider to that are probably even our, you know, our, our, our grandparents or whatever would have considered to be, you know, unchristian, you know, we consider that our generation considers that to be the norm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay to, it's okay to, well, you know, maybe, well, maybe some things, I'm, I'm not going to say everything, you know, but there, there's a lot of things I think there that, that are really hearkening back to a time in which, you know, and then, and then, okay. There's also, you know, and I've said this before, is that I do think that there's also a portion of our society that has this romantic view, you know, like this romantic lie of the of the pre-Christian past where they think mm -hmm. like, you know, being engaged in all this sort of these religious traditions. I mean, people people think that this is people laugh it off. Anyway. The downside, it's the downside of the Renaissance, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, like they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you really, so you really think that the, it was the Renaissance that gave rise to that? I think, I, yeah, I mean, well, oh, yeah. Well, 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 because remember that that prior to the Renaissance, if you were to ask mm -hmm. any Christian, <clears throat> if you were to ask anybody in in within Christendom, when did our civilization begin? Mm -hmm. They would say they uh, they would say with the death or resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, and right. then and and then, and then what they would do is start going through the the um the violent the you know the the violent uh, mass cleansing that that the Roman government initiated against Christians for the first few hundred years of of, of the church. Mm -hmm. You know, and but they would say that that is when our civilization was founded. What was right. was with was with Jesus Christ, and then with the ongoing persecution of the Christians up until. Yeah. Through through our persecution, Christians took over the Roman Empire, basically. Yeah. Um, but in the Renaissance, you had all these weird, you know, these weird intellectuals and stuff that were saying, oh, no, 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 no. Actually, our great civilization, you know, Jesus did a lot of good things, mm -hmm. but but our civilization actually goes back to um to 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 the Greeks. Right. Yeah. You know, it goes back to Athenian democracy and all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that is such a whacked out idea because the only thing that, that made the only thing that made Athenian democracy possible was slavery. And, yeah. and, 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 and we're, we're not talking about small scale slavery here. We're That's talking right. like, like, pro I don't know, probably like less than 10% of the population were not slaves. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, I think, I think you're. I think you have a point there. Is that um, the Renaissance world did sort of glorify, um, glorify, or, or maybe in some terms romanticize the the Greco-Latin, the you know Greco-Roman civilization. 
yeah. you know, to the extent that it made it, it made it, um, it sort of turned it into a rivalry uh, with, with, uh, with the, with the, you know, with the Christian worldview, right? Now, some people might argue, though, they would say, well, the Christians actually, for all their persecution that they went through, they ended up taking the same mantle and 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 doing the same same thing that they were renouncing, you know, the violence that they were renouncing, but they still picked it up under under someone like say Constantine or Charlemagne, and you know, still had these violent impulses or or or, or, or reactions to things, you know. So, you know, it's I mean that that is a I think that's something that Christians have to acknowledge. You know that we 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 maybe we didn't um, we weren't always the best. You know what but I'm saying? Isn't it interesting, we didn't always though, live up to the Christian message. That's what well, I. Well, but say. isn't it interesting though that it's only Christians that self reflect in that way? <laughs> yeah, that that's <laughs> you know I, you that's, know I, I find that really, so, yeah that that is that is true, bro. That's a, that's definitely something that that's definitely something I would agree to is that, yep, we are the only, we are the ones who, even if we don't reflect on it, we are forced to have to actually reconcile, like reconcile that other. And it's true. Like other religions don't have to do that. They don't, they're not, people of other faiths are not forced to have to have to reckon with their shortcomings of their, of their religious values or, or you might say maybe those values are not even part of their religious, you know, the, the care for the victim, right? The care for the oppressed, right? Mm -hmm. um, for the for the for the widow, for the for the orphan, you know, whatever, right? They're not. They don't have to think about that. They don't have to moralize that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They don't have to be reckon with that. They don't have to struggle with that, right? Like don't you know like fight you know fight against your your violent impulses fight against your your, your you know the seven deadly sins fight against the you know str struggle with that they don't have to yeah they don't have to they don't have to think about that as much it, it's if for anything else like it's put in our faces yeah that you know this is your fault you know this is you know Christians this is what you guys do. Well, you know. well, and and you know, th this is another interesting thing to me is that the same people that will condemn Christians mm -hmm. for for going and like let's say let's say the 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 Reconquista, for instance, mm -hmm. which I'm so glad that the Reconquista of Spain was successful because mm -hmm. that's where a large swath of my family originally come from, you know. <laughs> um, you know, and so, so, so the thing is, th there are a lot of people that they want to try to make Christians feel guilty for, for liberating Spain from mm -hmm. from Muslim rule, and and they want mm -hmm. to try to make Christians feel guilty for like, for 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 wiping out um, human sacrifice in mm -hmm. in Ireland, where the other large swath of my family are from, and mm -hmm. from wiping out human sacrifice in Germany, which, mm -hmm. you know, th <laughs> thank goodness it took hold, but I don't think it took hold there as strongly as it did other places. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> but, 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 you know, the thing is, they want to try to make Christians feel feel guilty and wrong for doing those things. But these mm -hmm. are the same people that will not only justify the, um, the, the nuclear bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, mm -hmm. and the, the, um, the firebombing of Dresden and the firebombings mm -hmm. of, of Japanese cities. Where they, I mean, where where the, where the United States, we massacred, we massacred hundreds, at least hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of of innocent civilians. We literally burned them to death. Mm -hmm. We incinerated them. We incinerated mm -hmm. their their entire city. We incinerated and we mm -hmm. incinerated their corpses. And we kept on flying back in waves and waves and waves to rekindle the these nasty fires and everything. So we can wipe out the paramedics and everything too. I mean, the, these were nasty things, and those people will say, "Well, that was just because we because we were spreading democracy." Right, right. But right, but right, but right. but then then they'll they'll say that my ancestors were wrong um, mm. during the time of the Reconquista mm. because they were they were tired of being of being murdered by the Muslims. 
Yeah. You know, or, you, you know, yeah. you, you know, yeah. a, 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 another thing that I'll hear a lot of the time is, is they'll say that the, um, that the, uh, that the, uh, that the Inquisition against the Cathars in, in France, mm -hmm. they'll say, oh, mm -hmm. that was wrong. The Cathars didn't want any, didn't want any problems or anything. Bull. Mm -hmm. That the Cathars were literally, they were killing people and, and they were yeah. telling people to cut off their junk and, okay. and like, and. And you know, and and they were slaughtering people. If people didn't agree with the Cathars, they would just kill them. Yeah, you know, and yeah. and so so at that point, I guess the question is, at what point? So when when you're dealing with people like that, there is a certain point where there there is a time for you to go in and to go in with the sword. Mm -hmm. There 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 is a certain time for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mean you mean in the sense of like a just war theory or what what yeah. is what would be just way to defend oneself. Yeah, and I and I do think that there is but, a but, certain but level. it must be yeah. done in self-defense. Like like yeah. like the crusades. The the, mm -hmm. the crusades were done were done in defense of Christians. Yeah, yeah, and that that's you something know? that a lot of people they're not aware of. I don't think they understand that like that that whole history because they they want to again, they want to say that well, it was Christianity that that created all these problems. And, 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 and I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't know much about the crusades, but what, what I, what I, what I keep reminding myself of is the fact that why did Christians start going there in the first place? You know what I'm saying? They were going there as pilgrims, you know, mm -hmm. they, they would, they, they would go on a pilgrimage and interestingly enough, I mean, this, this goes back to, I mean, just, probably the dawn of the Byzantine empire, you know, I mean, there were constant pilgrimages to the Holy land, you know, not just to the Holy Sepulcher, but there, there was another church called the church of Cathisma, which was another pilgrimage. Where site. was that at? It was in Jerusalem. Yeah. It's, um, um, it's, a. Um, there are still, there are st the, the, the groundwork for it is actually still there. The, the okay. foundation for it is it, the foundations are still there and the thing about it is like this this church was a um um you know since 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 we're talking just after the um the feast of the assumption this mm -hmm. is probably a good a good point to make but uh that site was actually a pilgrimage site um for christians in i want to say the maybe the fourth or fifth century um, pilgrims would go there to commemorate the, um, they, they called it the seat of Mary and they, it, it was there. And I think it, it was a church that commemorated the, do they call it the, is it called the tomb of Mary? Is that? No, no, it's called the church of Cathisma. It no longer okay. exists. Yeah. Okay. It no longer exists. I don't remember when it was torn. You know, I don't remember when it was destroyed or taken down or whatever. Probably some psychopath destroyed it. Yeah, in, in, yeah. In, in, or or a team or a group of psychopaths. Yeah, 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 maybe. But 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 anyways, the 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 church, I think I believe it was supposed to commemorate the um the either the the ima the the immaculate conception of Mary or mm. the there's a there's an apocryphal gospel called the Apoc the apocryphal gospel of I believe it's Saint James. Oh. and it talks about how mary when she was uh on her journey to egypt either to egypt or back from egypt she was sat under a date palm tree and that tree actually gave her shade from the sun mm. something like that so there was something there's like the miracle of the date palm and all of this stuff you know so so anyways it was a church that commemorated you know her her um that that whole that whole um that whole story. Um, and so, so where was I at? Uh, uh, the, uh, the Middle East Christian pilgrims. Yeah. 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 You know um, that. Oh yes. And so anyways, the crusades, why, why, you know, why were they started? Well, you know, a lot of people argue because there were a lot of pilgrimages that people would go on from coming from various different parts of the world and they were getting, you know, harassed and 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 things like that so they needed they needed protection you know on their journeys and these knights acted as you know um 
you know, protectors for for the people that were going on these pilgrimages. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and then they created like they created hospitals, you know, um, and things like that for for people that were ill and sickly and stuff like that. And they had alms. They had um, fraternal orders that would, you know, help for payment, you know, and almsgiving and stuff like that, you know. So a lot of times, yeah, there there is this. Um, it's just there's always a there's always the negative narrative that is told in terms of when it comes to Christians, you know, like there's that movie, you know, and I'm not trying to keep going on with this, but there's the movie, the kingdom of heaven. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. I've, I've never seen it, but I remember when it came out, I think what, probably 20 years ago or, or something like that. Yeah. Maybe, dude, yeah. So somewhere around there. Right. Yeah. And, and the same guy that plays the elf in Lord of the Rings is the guy that plays the main character. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. 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 That was so like the anyway, early 2000s, I think, right? I believe so, yeah. yeah. And, and so, anyways, the, the 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 point I'm trying to make with that is that, you know, they, they kind of made the Christians at like villains. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. they just came in there for glory and conquest and that, you know, that, you know, all these, these European kings were just really greedy and 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 bloodthirsty and all they wanted to do is 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 um uh, you know take over jerusalem so they could become the rightful heir to the to the throne or something like that you know what i mean but, but, then, but you know that's that's what they always do you know they yeah. they want to try to portray like the you know all these fire bombings and and nuclear you know nuclear annihilation and everything they want to portray those as being morally justified good things that are wonderful yeah. and it's all right. chocolate rivers and lollipop fields and everything. But the the simple fact is that whenever whenever Christians pick up the sword, there's always a moral consideration to that. Yeah. And there are always moral limitations put on it as well. Right. You know, the the, the prioritizing of civilian life. Right. Um, you know, you the idea that you keep the battle on a battlefield that, right. that's separate from civilians, so that yeah. the only casualties that happen are 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 between armies. Yeah, you, right. you know, and things like that. Well, and that's, also and yeah. And let's talk about let's let's get into this. The whole thing of the ending of slavery. That's another yeah. thing that I want to talk about. Right. Because people think that. For some reason. Slavery existed here, you know, for 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 ages as if, you know, and, and that the, the Atlantic slave trade was was like the, the, the worst slave trade that ever existed and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, OK, but for all this. You know, that I'm not and I'm not and I'm not condoning it at all. But what I'm saying is, is that we need to consider the fact that there were places that. Had slavery and continue to have slavery even after the even after the First World War, you know, I mean, like the Ottoman, the Ottoman Empire. Continued to have slaves up until I think the 20th century. Yeah. Um. You talk about the the Atlantic slave trade. I mean the 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 slave trade towards the the east. You know, the, a lot of people will say it's the Arab slave trade or the, what have you, the Muslim slave trade. I mean that that was that was just as or even more devastating. I mean, you know, they they were taking slaves by the thousands. You know, I mean, and they, they were these were not like young; these were not old older adults that were taken into slavery these, these were mostly like younger like younger adults you know adult males that were you know castrated that were taken to you mm -hmm. know the ottoman empire to various other places within the middle east in the near east okay uh so you know again i think you know it's 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 a it's a good thing to think about slavery in terms of the fall. I mean, this is something I've said before. I mean, I think it, it, it was probably probably part of the human condition that we needed to work through. But who were the ones that were that were that were speaking out against it, that were saying that it was wrong? It was, it was the Christians, it was, it was the Christians. OK, and even 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 the Gospels, you know, people say, well, Paul condoned slavery. Paul did not condone slavery. OK, he did not say that it was the right thing. He, he was he was saying that, you know, don't don't create 
more problems for yourself right. in that condition, you know? And at that time, slavery slavery was very much, it was very much an institution in, in right. the Roman Empire. I mean, you know, right. Pete, you know, you know, and that's the thing. All these people that are, all these classicists and and, and all these people that are obsessed, the, the, these, these Renaissance thinkers and stuff that are all obsessed mm -hmm. with this idealized view of Greece and Rome, mm -hmm. the one part that they always, that none of them ever want to reckon with is that those, those were slave empires. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, probably, right, right. probably more brutal than, than, than what the Persians or the, oh, um, yeah. Uh, Babylonians or Sumerians could have ever aspired to be you, you know yeah. not that if I mean if if those you know if the Babylonians and and Persians and everybody if they had the the power and technology the, that the Romans had they probably would have done the same exact thing but oh yeah but the thing is to try to sit here and act like that everybody in it that that Greece and Rome were these you know, marble cities where everybody, they were all wearing their togas and they were, they were just all, you know, thinking about like mathematics and stuff and everything. Well, mm -hmm. the reason none of them actually had to, had to work mm -hmm. is because they all had slaves doing all their work for them. <laughs> right. 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 Well, they could just sit around and, and you know, and, 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 yeah. and that's the thing, the fundamental, um, that's actually, that's one of the fundamental characteristics of, of a pagan society is mm -hmm. slavery, mm -hmm. you know? Um, mm -hmm. and that, uh, that, that book I just started reading by, uh, by John Daniel Davidson, um, mm -hmm. the, called Pagan America that I highly recommend. He, um, he, 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 he talks about that in there and, and says that, that if you were to go and ask the Greeks and the Romans and the Babylonians and all these people, if you were to ask them, are you a slave empire? They mm -hmm. would say, of course, I'm not. of course we're not, yeah. but we, we, we have, the, we have these casts of people. Yeah. And, and, and this is just the way that we operate. This is the way that we make, this is the way that we function is yeah. they, they need us because we're stronger right. and, and we need them because they're weaker and this whole thing, it just works. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and so like to, to the pagan mind, it just, it just works. You know, it, yeah. it, it just, it's just reality. It just is the way it is. Yeah. And what they do is they, they, they repress all these notions of like natural law and all and their conscience and everything. That yeah. Christianity gives us the liberty to express, right? Yeah. And I think that's where we're quickly going. Um, yeah. And and I think it's really interesting that we're not allowed to acknowledge the fact that no, that one of the hallmarks of non Christian empires is slavery. Mm -hmm. We're not allowed to. We're not allowed. We we don't. We're not allowed to explore that anymore. Yeah. The yeah, only yeah. thing we're allowed to explore is that somehow slavery is a hallmark of christian civilization when yeah. in reality when, when in reality it wasn't even you know there were a lot of bad christians that that, that were slaveholders and stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the thing is you know you you had a lot of people um you had a lot of clergy you had you had a lot of you had a lot of Christians that that would say this thing's wrong, and mm -hmm. and you know you even had founding fathers th that would say, "I'm opposed to slavery, but I don't I don't know a way out of this because mm -hmm. um, people like Thomas Jefferson, for instance, who 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 freed all of his slaves and and gave them all an inheritance well, um, mm -hmm. after he died, he gave all of them an inheritance so that they could all go out and get their own land and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know the problems that a lot of that a lot of the founding fathers that were that were the ones that were abolitionists mm -hmm. what would, would say is, well, if we were to free all the slaves tomorrow, um, the, these are people that we've intentionally kept uneducated. Mm -hmm. The, these are people that we've stripped of property. These are people that would not have any, you know, we, we'd be liberating them to go out and, and, and have no place to live. They would have no land. They would have nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's probably where someone like Thomas Jefferson, I'm just going to pick on him because he's the one I can think I, that I'm thinking of right now. Mm -hmm. You know, what people like him probably could have done is they probably could have like given, you know, you know, get, given out acreage of, of his land to the slaves um, mm -hmm. and, you know, freed them and said, OK, you know what? We can keep working together or whatever, but this land is yours. You mm -hmm. know, that land will pass on to your children and so on and so on. Yeah. Um, but they didn't have the moral courage to do that, you know, because, yeah. yeah, yeah. you know, it, it, it's sort of like Gollum with the ring, you know, like yeah. 
you know, you know, you're, you're at the top of your little mountain and it's all working out great for you. You right. know, you may feel empathy and sympathy for the people that it's not working out well for, but mm. are you willing to, are you willing to risk discomfort mm. um, to do what's right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And many yeah. of them were like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, the, the easy thing was, if you really felt very strongly about it, the easy thing was to, you know, to, to help yourself um, die with a clean conscience mm. was to, to, to bequeath an inheritance in your will and liberate your slaves. But the hard thing, which would have been the correct thing to do, what would, would have been to, to figure out some to, to figure out some way of of treating them with dignity. And and I'm not saying that slaves were not treated with dignity, mm -hmm. but um, you know, but at this at the same time, I think that we hyper focus. Yeah, as as far mm -hmm. as slavery goes, I I think that it was, I think anybody would acknowledge that slavery was on its way out. Yeah, you know that yeah. that that American chattel slavery represents the last gasping, dying breath mm -hmm. of of that nasty, nasty fallen institution. You know, in in yeah. human history, that the, 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 yeah. the, that was that was eliminated by Christians. Right. Right. And, and, and I, I mean, I think, and I'll just, you know, I'll close with this. I mean, I do, th I do think that there's something to be said about the whole idea of being like, like hyper Christian. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like you're, you know, like your concern for the victim has turned, has turned you into like this, this hyper Christian, you know, like I'm going to focus so much on the fact that there are victims all around me that, you know, everything I do will be focused on, you know, protesting against, you know, the, this thing or that thing, or, you know, I'm going to go out and, you know, mother earth needs to be saved by all means necessary. So I'm going <laughs> to go out and fight and hang onto a tree, you know, or I'm going to, you know, uh, uh, you know, fight global warming. So I'm going to throw tomato juice on the Mona Lisa, you know, or, or something like that. You know, That is, mean? that's so ridiculous, man. I mean, but but it but it but it is a it, to me it, it is a hyper Christian thing because you you know in years past that probably would have been something that's like akin to slavery. Like we would say, okay, yeah, you know, you need to be concerned about you know uh, these people, and that that's something you should take seriously and stuff like that. But again. The only the only way that the only the only group that makes room for that is the Christian, yeah, the the, the, the Christian. No no other religion would make room for that. You know what I'm saying? It, if you said that in a if you said that in a pre Christian context, they would have just done away with you. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there's no such thing to them. There's no such thing as a victim. OK, that's your fate. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's you deserve to be in that situation. The gods put you there. You must have done something wrong. You know what I mean? So, so you know, something I've been thinking a lot about lately is, uh, yeah, you, you know, the the classic. Uh, the classic um, Platonic cave, you know, mm -hmm. that, um, you know, you know, Pla Plato says that the philosopher is like that he imagines a cave with a bunch of people trapped in it. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, mm -hmm. and the, the only thing that the people see is light that comes in through the cave, casting shadows on the walls of the cave. And mm -hmm. the people look at the, the, the people look at the shadows on the wall of the cave and yeah. they believe that's what's real. They believe that's reality. Right. And, and what, and what Plato says is that the philosopher is the person that goes out of the cave, experiences reality, and then, mm -hmm. and then tries to, Tr tries to bring the people out of the cave so they can see it too. Mm -hmm. And if they can't see it, then he tries to describe it to them. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in many ways, I think you talking about like hyper Christian, you know, hyper Christianity. I think that because we don't believe because the West has become so anti-transcendent mm -hmm. where we where we become just materialists where we just mm -hmm. look around and we say there's nothing there's nothing really beyond this mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it, it, you know um so because of that 
the stir that they have toward the victim mm-hmm. be because they see Christ in the victim mm-hmm. um they the, the the victim being a symbol of Christ mm-hmm. because they they be because they they've lost the connection between the symbol and and what is real mm-hmm. the victim would be like like the um shadows cast on the wall of the cave mm-hmm. and Jesus would be you know Jesus would represent the reality uh, you know outside mm-hmm. of the cave mm-hmm. they're 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 looking at the shadows on the cave and they think that is what is real okay they're lo- yeah. they're looking at the victim and they believe that's what's real but mm-hmm. what what they don't realize is the reason they're being moved to the victim yeah. is yeah. Because the victim is the shadow that reminds them of of the real Christ, you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I think in many ways, I man, honestly, I think a lot of it comes down to we are living in a time where, um, like take take the average uh, church service on a Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the the liturgical church service, you know, Christians, mm-hmm. Orthodox even your mm-hmm. episcopalians and people like that at least yeah. at least theologically speaking they believe that that you're being taken to the foot of calvary when you mm-hmm. um experience the eucharist you know mm-hmm. um you know that 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 you're being transcendently taken to a place outside of time and space that's mm-hmm. not very well communicated in the west today because it's it's outside of our frame that we have our frame of acceptable uh our, our our accept our frame of acceptability you know mm-hmm. um so now 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 what christians want to do is think of the ch- the church service on sunday as being like a place to learn mm-hmm. you know yeah. um and i guess in a roundabout way what i'm trying to say is we become materialists yes mm-hmm. and we have to get we have to get away from that and christians christians have got to bring the tra- the transcendental back into reality and the only way to do that is to bring it back into our faith mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 you know yeah i i guess i yeah that's a that's a good hermeneutic man i don't i you know i don't really have a i don't really have much to say <laughs> yeah, i don't really have much to say about anything uh except that i agree with what you said i'm i, I, I oh, do well think- and you know, let's loop all this back into Disney movies, right? Yeah. Like so, so when you when a when a Disney movie is based upon this notion of like of self sacrifice, mm-hmm. and, and is based upon these very intangible things, mm-hmm. you know, like you know, self sacrifice and 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 love, and mm-hmm. um, and you know, stepping up and doing what's right, even though it's not the easy thing, like Simba returning back to Pride Rock. You know, and 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 stuff like that, and having to confront, having to confront sins and errors that that you have made, you know, having, you know, and and having to essentially do penance for those things, and being yeah. being embarrassed and everything like that, you know, th- those are intangible things. Yeah. But when you're, but you know, unfortunately, now the storytelling of Disney and and a lot of the other and all the other studios too, it it, it it's all been it's all become about pushing this new, new propaganda where it, it's about pushing new, new manners, I think is the best way to put it where, mm-hmm. where whenever you, you, you know, so if, if you see a lot of barbershop scenes in, in new movies and stuff, mm-hmm. the, the, the barber will ask, um, ask, can I have your permission to touch your hair? Okay. You know, and then, <laughs> then the person in the chair will say yes, you know, and, um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and 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 then there's a the whole pronoun thing where where, where right. the, the they'll ask, well, can you tell me what your preferred pronouns are? The, the, these are all pushing new new manners, you know. The, yeah. the, the, this is all, you know, and the, these things are not. This is not about, um, uh, this is not about um, encouraging your spirit to be transcendent. Yeah, you know. Um, it's all about this, it's, it's all about, about virtue condition. Too. Yeah, this is about conditioning you to behave in a certain way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's virtue signaling. Yeah, and and I and I and I think that um, what was I going to say? I was going to say, oh, yeah. The the thing the thing I also think here is that like you you talk about 
you know, did, we talk about this whole thing of, of, of being hyper Christian and always, you know, centering on the, the idea of the victim and everything is it's, okay. Well, what is the, what is the, what is the, what is the opposite of that is like, we tell somebody you, you, you need to ask for forgiveness. That's basically what they're saying. Mm -hmm. You need to constantly be asking for forgiveness. You need to be constantly asking, you know, that saying that you did something wrong. You know what I'm saying? It, there isn't the room for reconciliation and, and accepting that forgiveness. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? To say, okay, yeah. I forgive you. Let's reconcile. Let's build. Let's, and let's, move on. let's heal and move on, man. And that's something that I think the West is, we're missing that part of the Christian thing. You know, the Christian yeah. message is that, okay, in order to really heal and move past this, it's not to just keep throwing uh, coals onto the fire. Mm. You know what I mean? is to say, okay, look, this fire is meant to, 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 to go through, a, is meant to put us through a purification process, through a healing process, through a reconciliation process, and then come out on the other side. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I don't know, use those ashes for something good, you know, like washing, washing, washing your own, you know, washing your plates and stuff or something, you know, yeah. you, you, you know, you don't want to continue to, to, to uh you know yeah i mean i just i just think that maybe christians you know or or those who consider themselves to be secular have no room for really trying to understand what it means to reconcile and 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 then you know have the whole thing of 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 being forgiven and forgiveness and reconciliation and and moving forward because because I think they don't really believe that people people can be forgiven. I think yeah. they really don't believe that, that reconciliation is a real thing that well, well well it's because in this in this new emerging uh pagan reality, power mm -hmm. and the exercise of power is the it, it is where you derive meaning for everything. yeah and and, yeah. and morality becomes subjective. yeah you know morality is no longer universal mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. that's that's the world that we're moving into. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and, and you see, and the thing yeah. is, our Christian ancestors mm -hmm. looked at this world, looked at this whole thing and they defeated it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, St. Bonaventure famously went and and cut down that oak tree that um yeah. that, that that the Germans were sacrificing humans to. And yeah. built and built a church out of the wood from that tree. Yeah, yeah, I you know, and that. and yeah, and and you know that is that's what that's what what we you know I, I'm I'm not advocating for any kind of for any kind of violence or anything like that. Yeah. You got to be a brave. You got to be a brave. Or for you got kind be of destruction. Brave. Yeah. Well. Well. And, and eventually, Saint Bonaventure. What you know, he he, he was eventually mar martyred. You know. <laughs> I'm sure by, by, se, by the said by, by said Germans, you know, right, um, right. But right. but the uh, I, I think that that we you know Christians have got to I think Christians have got to acknowledge this culture is not their culture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. Christians, I think Christians need to create parallel institutions, but mm -hmm. I think Christians also need to look at. They need to look at this culture. They need to look at this world and they need to be strategic about what they do. Mm -hmm. And what they need to do is, is they need to intentionally place themselves in different, in different, um, in different institutions so that they can try to, so that they can try to take those institutions over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And, and be, and be, be more constructive than, yep. than, 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 yeah. But but what I think they need to do is they need to understand that this culture is not their culture. They need to have a strong they need to have a strong parallel community. Yeah. Where where their inner circle, where where their family and families and friends and parish communities and church and, and church communities and everything where 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 they they are all one tribe. Right. And then right. we we recognize this culture. For being the outsiders culturally right. like right. you know i mean we're not going you know you know 
because we we believe morality is un- is universal. So whether someone's a part of our tribe or not, mm-hmm. um, we, we we still treat them the same. You know, right. they're, they're, you know, right. they're they're still equally dignified people. Right. But I think Christians have got to Christians have got to acknowledge that because I think for so long Christians have thought this whole culture is all mine. I, I'm, mm-hmm. I, you know, you know, I'm, I'm part of this culture. This culture is a part of me, mm-hmm. but Christians have got to start realizing this culture is not part of you. This culture, this culture hates you. This culture is antithetical to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose it's, I suppose it's a, it's more of a thing of, you know, to, to be in the world, but not of the world. Yeah. Right? 100%. But yeah. the thing is you, I think you have to have, I think your inner circle have got to be, um, have got to be fellow Christians, right? Yeah. You know, because you know you you have to have a you have to have a charging station mm-hmm. where where you go back to recharge before you go back out before you go back out into the world, right? You know, right. It, you know, yeah. it, if you're existing in the world and that's what you're charging on, and mm-hmm. then you go back out into the world, you know, it's only a matter of time but before you end up falling, you know, right, 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 yeah. The stumbling blocks. Yeah. 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 All right, bro. Well, this is, you know, this is, this has been a, a okay, another well, good exploratory conversation, you know, we're, <laughs> we're getting may, some, may, uh, may, uh, may, maybe, may, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe sometime in the future we, we can really delve into one or two particular uh, Disney movies and, yeah, and kind of get into cool. the symbolism of them and everything. Yeah, yeah, I'll be down with that. Maybe we'll start with Moana first since we keep going back to her. Okay. (laughs) All right, brother. It's good (laughs) talking to you, man. All right, man. Peace. All right. Ciao.